dun 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 Welcome back to another Getting Project Done. Continuing work on the Pig Gator. We worked on the cloth last episode. Uh, I'm mostly happy with where it sits. Uh, I'm mostly happy with where the flesh is at. I have not worked on the fingernails or the quills any further. As I'm still kind of just processing really where I want to go with that. Brighter or lighter, darker, you know, things like that. So I think I'm going to jump over to the metallic side of things and uh, begin laying out the metals all over the place because I'm getting tired of looking at all these little gray spots everywhere. And yeah, so that's that's the game plan today. We're going to start working on the metals. The metals. I've been looking forward to this. The metals? Going all yes. metal and all? Metal! Well then. This way, Charlie. <laughs> Yeah, so we're just going to work on metals. Nothing fancy. Uh, there's going to be a lot of base coating. And probably get into the verdigre and all of that. Get it started. I'm going to use Warp Lock Bronze from Citadel. Although if you have any other dark brown metallics, it works just as well. It doesn't have to be Citadel, is my point. And so how's bar barfing chic today? Pretty good. Awesome. It's good to hear. Had a good day at work, and I have now delivered all my military equipment. I'm done. You are done with the military. Yeah, well, not emotionally, but uh, <laughs> on paper. On paper, yes. Okay. Well, um, you know, congrats, I suppose, even though I don't think you really were terribly excited about leaving, but... No, but, you know... But yeah, my uh, immune system says fuck you. Uh, well, yeah, Mr. Boop joining us. Welcome. Yeah, well, you're hey, not, you are gifted with my pres my presence. <laughs> your your presence is a gift, Boop. It is a gift. <laughs> Every day, I'm like, geez, I hope Boop shows up today because, man, I miss him and I I just feel a certain palpable excitement build up in the air when you show up and so yeah i'm excited i mean the my aim is, is so clenched right now yeah is it, is it excitement or is it just so you don't feel like uh seeing you have like schizophrenia talking to yourself <laughs> <laughs> both um i think really uh the only way i can describe it is i'm moist with anticipation when you show up <laughs> Like, I remember, like, internet friends, you know, getting one video games, being like, it's my birthday, did you get me something? Like, as a joke, you know, like, I would be like, yeah, you're gifted with my press. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a gift, though. I mean, I realize that you're being funny, but it is a gift. And I do appreciate oh. you showing up. Right. If I, I saw that... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I said that you're becoming more internet famous. Uh, more internet that famous? You had a, yeah, more internet famous. The more internet street cred. Street cred. <laughs> yeah. Because we're all... Somebody posted in Discord your, dis, your interview, discussion, I don't know, roundtable with a... Shoot, what's his name? Jazza? Yes. Yeah, uh, it was uh, it was really cool. Uh, I was, you know, uh, big thanks to Kim for, uh, you know, talking me up to uh, those boys because, uh, yeah, that's what the, that's what led to that. Uh, some uh, some Australian fellas. I mean, they're, they're, I've, I was familiar with them before. Uh, I wasn't. Yeah. I happened, the, uh, my first exposure was somebody posted something called Ghost Bear Project <laughs> in, in, in the Discord and I watched it and I was like, yeah, it's pretty interesting. You know, and I mean, like, he want, he has a vision in mind for his custom chapter, and he wanted to tread some unfamiliar waters, and uh, I was more than happy to uh, help him out in that regard, you know, so that, uh, you know, he wasn't 
I mean, I don't think he was really running the risk of... He just wanted to play, like, be safe. Yeah, and I mean, like, you and know, that that's fine. In today's day and age, I don't blame anybody for wanting to, you know. Um, I mean, like, like, you, you do run the risk of, I don't know, to some looking like you're kowtowing to, to public opinion and things like that. And I don't really quite buy into that. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong. Like if, okay, for example, if I was to make a Space Marine chapter and I was going to use, um, <coughs> oi, geez, geez. Oh, it's somebody on YouTube. I'm not on YouTube, am I? No, I shouldn't be. Uh, if I if, if I was to do a Space Marine chapter that was heavily Japanese inspired, well, I don't really know anything other than surface things about Japanese culture, and so it really wouldn't be appropriate if I was to use all these things, especially things that might be taboo amongst them, right? And that's that's the concern is is about being respectful and you know not portraying any yeah. kind of negative stereotypes you want you'd want to read up on it or talk to somebody i definitely would want to talk to somebody i would try and do as much research as possible sure. and anything that i wanted to incorporate then i definitely would ask somebody about you know so yeah i mean i don't i don't see any problem with it i mean it's just being respectful to people i mean what's wrong with that uh, not live on YouTube. Oh no, I agree. Yeah, I was I was looking on YouTube too. I don't see anything. My job is done. <laughs> yeah, I'm not on YouTube, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're. Yeah. I don't know. I have a bad habit of forgetting to do things sometimes. So. I'm not a very. You know, I'm like for all the streaming I do, I'm not a very good streamer. <laughs> <laughs> The amount that I do, yeah, I'm, I'm actually not very good at this. So, we're just going to start laying out color on top of areas, and we're just going to continue working. And I, my to-do pile, something showed up in the mail the other day, and my to-do pile got a little bit bigger, so I, I really do feel the pressure to kind of get some more of this figure done and you know so that because i think we're gonna do something fun tomorrow i'm gonna bust out something tomorrow you're gonna bust tomorrow i'm gonna bust tomorrow i'm just gonna bust it all over the place and you know can't do that it's november oh right it's november that's right who came up with that stupid rule well there's two there's two versions of november Okay. One is non-stop, and one is no. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, just no. Just like, no. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little no, extreme. I'm, I'm trying to keep it, uh... Trying to, uh... In case there's any kitties in chat. There's not supposed to be kids in my chat. <laughs> but they do show up He's from time to time. He's talking about masturbation. Yeah. yeah. There's no not November and then non-stop not November. <laughs> non-stop. Oof. <laughs> that that sounds um that sounds almost like life threatening. Like, you know, I I can't believe somebody out there is just cranking it out like six times a day kind of thing. It's it seems a little extreme <laughs> to me. Well, remember uh, to have Chris. Nah, because if I say something, because this person watches the show, and there's like a very small chance they watch the show, I don't want to call them out, but one of my army buddies, or one of my buddies in the army, <laughs> is one of his people. What else are you going to do there? <laughs> Draw on dicks the on uh, porta potties. Yeah, and some Oof. And, uh,. Sweep rain. Sweep sweep rain is a popular pastime in the army, apparently. Sweeping rain. Uh, Sweeping rain. Yeah. It's, that's it's that's the term for it. Punishment. That sounds messed up. You you, uh, you do the fuck up, and then they tell you to go sweep rain. So you go out in the rain and you you sweep it. Got you. Yeah, that sounds like a crap job. Sounds stupid. But it's meant to be. Yeah, it's a punishment. It's a I mean. form of punishment. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's not really 
What does it help? <laughs> I mean, you don't. You basically you, you won't do it again, probably. I, yeah, it, I would there's assume. There's positive reinforcement, and then there's go sweep the fucking rain reinforcement. <laughs> I, I know if you don't want to sweep the rain anymore, uh, don't do whatever it fucking did. <laughs> yeah, I know if that was me, I I probably would learn from it and not do it again. Because that would suck. Especially if you ended up with a cold or something like that, some sniffles. It'd just make him take care of a rock for like a week, and if, uh, if it's gone, then they're fucked. <laughs> this is your baby, take care of it. And then somebody, oh fuck, where's my rock? Huh? Well, now everybody has to run several miles. So, um, I'm thinking I'm gonna go to GW Sunday. I think I'm picking up the middle battle from or the Middle Earth starter. Or is it? Yeah, Battle Pelnor Fields. Ooh, that's a good old box. Cause uh, I used to play, and I kind of get into inkling to play again. Well, that's cool. I have never played the game. I've, I don't think I've ever painted a miniature. It is alternating activation. Kind of like Necromon, though, I guess. No. Yeah, Necromon is probably the closest thing GW makes. That's similar? I, uh, yeah, I'd that's like similar. It's the only thing I can really think of. I would like to paint, uh, buy and paint small. Because cause your units are, I mean, you can have, like, big units, but it's really focuses on the characters and stuff. Yeah, from what I understand, it's it's like hero, old hero hammer kind of thing. Because you can have, and typically the units you have, your army might be, like, model-wise big, but, like, um, you know, your warband... Or war bands because you can have multiple in your army. You know, it's typically led by a hero, and then he might have five, you know, five or ten dudes with him. Or you might only have like three. Or especially if you play the nine, the nine ring wraiths. Some people will just play that, and it's just nine. Their list is nine ring wraiths. <laughs> Jeez. And um, they are very very strong, but um. The Ring Wraiths and Sauron's mini have a used to. I don't know if they do anymore. They used to when I played. They had a special w rule called the like Will of Evil or whatever. So they were super strong, but um as the game went on, they would get weaker and weaker. Oh, they kept nerfing their abilities. Yeah. So like every every um every turn, they would start suffering. Their stat lines would start suffering and stuff. Right. Kim, hey, heard my name. Yeah, I was just talking about you, bud. Just uh, talking me up to uh, Jazza's crew there. Tabletop time. Because we, we, we were talking about uh, Jazza releasing that video there today. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay day at work. Just okay? Yeah, I mean, I got, um, so I had a talk with my boss about, like, school and stuff and wanting to, like, cut my hours or take more days off. So either cut my hours or I just have longer work days, but fewer work days. And, uh, um, he was more receptive to that idea than I thought because <laughs> I thought I was going to have to give my two weeks. Well, as far as I understand things, I mean, you know, most places are pretty accommodating, right? And everybody's talking about how, you know, there's a uh, labor shortage. So he probably doesn't want to have to go looking for somebody new, especially if you're doing, you know, a good, jo good job, right? Good job and it's skilled labor. Well, I don't know if I'm doing a good job. <laughs> we don't really do, like performance reports or anything right but i haven't got fired so i assume that <laughs> <laughs> right skilled labor so i because you know if i had to give my two weeks he'd have to go find somebody in two weeks and then 
I'd have to train them to do my job in those two weeks. So. Right, exactly. It's 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 a pain in the ass for him. It's more of a pain in the ass than a, to accommodate you. So, accommodation's the better route as far as he's concerned. So I might move to a three. If I move to a three day week, my days are going to be longer. But I don't mind that. No, that's good. Uh, I can work long days if I get like a long rest period. Granted, my rest period will be filled with like class stuff, but right. Yeah, you it, it wouldn't be digging ditches. <laughs> right. Yeah, or operating equipment. That's all right. And so what are you going to school for? I'm going for, I'm double majoring. I know you've told me, but I forget. So I'm trying to get two, um, two bachelor's degrees. Oh. One in German studies, which is in, it's a three, three court, a three course meal for a class. It's a uh, language, culture, and history. And then either normal engineering or the school has a really, really long freaking name for it, but it's basically agricultural engineering hey. with livestock and horticulture attached to it. Nice. You get to play with animals? Yeah. That's cool. So. Now, don't do anything I'm to the animals. About that. So I'm talking with the school, like, should I take the normal engineering or this? It's the best way to put it because it's under the en engineering category, but it's not just engineering. It's like horticulture, all, livestock, all that stuff. So is it, uh, <clears throat> do you make, uh, write out feeding plans or? It's, it it's an everything course because it is. Instead of four years, it's like four and a half, if that makes sense. Because a normal bachelor's degree is like four years. This is more like four and a half. But it's feeding plants, barn building, yeah, okay. horticulture, so things to do with trees, um, crop cool. layout, you know. I did that in college. Or what uh, What would uh, me college for you guys? Did you say meat they have college? a really, really long name for it. And if I do that, I actually get a discount on my tuition because it is a an in-demand, like a, engineering's in-demand, but that is like super in-demand. I guess if that makes sense, at least in the U.S. Right. Well, there's lots of things in demand in the U.S. right now. That's well, cool. yes, but even before COVID, it was really... Yeah. Really in demand, and then and then I have my farrier slash blacksmith classes and crap, so I'm gonna be fully booked. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to paint me. A good thing. Well, paint. <laughs> cold well, contrast. <laughs> but but hang on to it. Hang on to your stuff, and one day when you retire, you can return to your big pile. <laughs> no, I'm sure I'll have time to paint. I'll just be busy. I won't get to play as much. Right. I try. I try to play once a week. Go down to the shop once a week, but uh, it might turn into like a once every couple of weeks, once a month kind of thing. Right. Boop, do you play any instruments? I'm just trying to figure out how similar we actually are because it's. I used to play violin and guitar. I think I told Chris this. Yeah, there we go. You are the American version of me. <laughs> Apparently. How crazy are your exes? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there you go. So some landmines avoided. Yeah. Good on you. <laughs> so basically, you're saying is Boop is uh, part of the uh, the um, the brighter timeline. You you're currently in the darker timeline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris being Doctor Strange right now. Yeah. He's looking Fucking into the many futures. Day. He's looking into the many futures. Yeah. <laughs> it's what I do, man. Tough. 
time is but a tapestry. I'm not, like, I, I kind of like superheroes in passing, and I'm not a super big, like, Doctor Strange fan, but I've always found his, like, foresight power kind of interesting, because he sees everything, right? So he sees all the outcomes, but he can do nothing to get to the good outcome. He's, he's not allowed to do anything. Yeah, these are, these they are all just dumb, dumb rules. <laughs> so I, I always... And it wasn't like interesting, like, oh, wow, fascinating. It's like interesting. So it's like, so basically he sees all the bad shit and all the good shit. And he obviously he wants all the good shit to happen. But it's like watching the TV and not being like, you know, you know, like you can't do anything. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> it's an, it, it basically what you're talking about. Frustration of having that power of being able to see all the possibilities and what you need to do, but not be able to like act on it. There's a word for it. Frustration? No, impotence. He's impotent to do anything. Yeah. Because he can so see it's it. It's like some kind of like rule to his power because as soon as he does something to try and get the outcome, it automatically like negates having that outcome or some shit. Interesting. So no, I just found it like interesting. Not like, aha, uh-huh, this is like cool, interesting. It's more like, uh huh, <laughs> like having this this power that seems great, but then it comes with like the asterisks and like the fine print that makes the power just kind of like lame. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like uh, when uh, Homer goes to the gift shop and he buys the cursed doll. It can, it can do all sorts of things for you, but it's cursed. It's like turning invisible when nobody's watching. Basically. <laughs> or making birds hover. What are you talking about? Birds don't hover. That's a uh, CIA uh, thing. You know, they have to replace the batteries on it. On those yeah, yeah, I had this discussion with my mum yesterday. But the birds sit on the electrical wires to charge up. <laughs> <laughs> that that is, I mean, we're all laughing, but that is an actual thing. I I am not very familiar with this, but apparently, yeah, there are folk out there who think birds aren't real. Oh, it's because I made them. In I, life. I was making the pun in cheek joke, but I was trying not to go down, fall down that route. I was just like kind of tangentially touching it. <laughs> but we could go down great. that route if you want. <laughs> Why, Boop, are you, are you one of those cats who thinks birds aren't real? No. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was just tangentially, sarcastically touching that subject for the sake of humor. Oh. But we can go, we can go down the discussion on why people think that they're fake. Yeah. I, I, sarcastically I, touching sounds like a bad time. I, <laughs> I was, like, kind of, like, I guess I shouldn't be at this point, but I was kind of shocked that... That's actually a thing. Like, how the hell do you go through this life? And then, like, what breaks in your brain to, to think that, to think that that's true? Like, what what has to break in your brain to take I that seriously? I think it's seriously? just reinforcement because, let's be honest, most people go, yeah, government, corrupt, whatever, but, um. There's a small minority of people, and they tend to, like, on the Venn diagram, cross with people that think that aliens are watching specifically them, and these people think the government is specifically watching them. And then they kind of intersect. When, uh, sorry to break it to you, Phil, in the trailer part, uh, nobody cares <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of... Your life is not that interesting. Yeah, I mean, like, that that falls into the category of, like, you know, people who are worried about microchips and needles and things and, you know, stuff like that. Like, that's that's kind of absurd as well. I have seen the, um, there's a company, I think it's in Iceland, that developed a microchip that opens doors that you can, like, put in your arm. And instead of, like, having a key card thing, you can just put your, like, hand up to the sensor and the door opens. And I thought that was cool. 
and I'm not against like technology like that. It's just like something in me is like, you know, that thing is under your skin. <laughs> yeah, like like the <laughs> long term like, effects kinda, of like, having that. Me out, like in the back, like you know, like cyberpunk limbs, all cool and stuff. And then like something in the back of my brain's like, yeah, but that like things like coming out of your arm. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, like having a, a, a an apprehension about technology, new technologies. Sure, I get. I mean, like I personally will never get um, the, one of those um, home devices that you talk to, the like Alexa and shit. Alexa. Yeah, I'll never get one of those. Well, I say never, but I mean, who knows? But yeah, I'm very reluctant because even having a phone on me, at, you know, most times. I am apprehensive of if that microphone is on or if the camera is on or, you know, my phone is sending out data that, you know, I do not want to go out there. Now, I am not doing anything that really, you know, I would be have to be that cautious about it, but it's still a, it's still a privacy issue. And, you know, anything that, you know, basically... People just want to get your data so they can sell you more crap. Well, I'd rather disrupt that than help because it's it's invasive. I wouldn't say I'm technolo- technology like apprehensive or whatever, but it's like when it starts coming to the the stuff that like you know stick under your skin. Like I don't know if you've seen Cyberpunk, but like how they jack in the computers, the thing that comes out of their wrist. Yeah, that kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. But I mean, like some like stuff a, seems very, um, like very plausible as far as you know people utilizing it. Like for example, um, like cell phones becoming more and more integrated with our own person. Kind of like, did you ever watch the remake of um, Total Recall? I'll take your silence as a no. So, basically, in that. The, the, the people in the show, because it's taking place in the far, not far future, but far, far enough future. No, I hadn't seen the remake. Okay. So their cell phone basically is uh, grafted into their hand. And so like whenever they talk, all they have to do is just like, you know, bring their hand up to their, to their head to, to yeah. signify that they're talking or they can dial numbers. Of course, they, if they touched a pane of glass, the glass through, you know, OL, OLED would display, you know, of, of, a face-to-face call or you know stuff shit like that right it's fantasy of course but you know i think something like that in the far future maybe not even that far future uh is more likely to occur rather than you know these you know i don't know it's, it's a lot of craziness but yeah i'm not like you know like apprehensive it's just like the technology that like you know, typically displayed in, like, cyberpunk or, like, near future, where it's, like, stuff coming out of you. It's, like, kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies a little bit. Like, something in the back of my brain's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I see, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Like, It's like, kind of, like, a similar, like, heebie-jeebies, I guess, to, like, you know, like, compound fractures, where it's not, like, broken, but then, you know, it's coming out of the skin, like, the bone's coming out of the skin. Right. So, like, the idea of, say... Like, uh, something, yeah, coming out. <laughs> Like the idea of, say, nanobots that are in your bloodstream freaks you out. A little bit. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Like, I'm not, like, against it, but it's just, like, in the back of my brain, it's kind of like, eh. No, I I totally agree. I mean, you know. But I, I, like, I think over time, in the next, you know, couple hundred years. People will get used to it. It'll become just a... Yeah, okay. like the the augmenting ourselves with technology, I think, will be more commonplace than than we think right now. I think we were talking about it like a couple, like a week or two ago. Like the new three D prosthetic limbs that they they can't do complex motions like the hands that they three D printed for amputees, but they can move based on like the electrical pulses from like nerves and stuff. Yeah. I can't do like super complex motions, but they can like grab, you can like grab a can. So I'm sure we'll be there at some point. Yep. Oh yeah, it will be. But it's, it's part of the reason why I haven't played Cyberpunk is because like 
and half of the cutscenes involve you like jacking into something and it's like your character just like pulling this cord out of their wrist like he's spider-man and i'm just like yes are you sure is it because of all the nudity <laughs> <laughs> yes this is a uh a, a, a good christian server okay <laughs> no nudity yeah <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with all the nudity. Yeah, I had a <laughs> What was funny was, um, there was a joke going around until somebody literally counted, like, um, that the, the that somebody in the game development department spent more time modeling dildos than, like, you know, ironing out the game, because the game did lots of problems. And somebody went in there, there was, like, a couple hundred... <laughs> Oh, really? So we had to, like, individually model Yeah, that's spending a little... That's spending a little bit of excess time on something like that. Like, that's a couple days worth of work for a programmer to go through and... Yeah, we're like only at... We're, we're only at... Like, physically put them somewhere? Yeah, like, the, we're, we're only at dildo 66, and, uh, you know, we need another day to finish up our work on the more. dildos. Yeah. <laughs> I'd hate that job. See, it would be funny, like, the first few times, but then it's like, oh, I gotta do this how many times? Yeah. <laughs> that's another thing, though, with, like, like cyberpunk-esque, like, movies and stuff, is that that stuff, like, you wouldn't dare, like, well, I don't know. Most people wouldn't dare, you know, walking around with the freaking dildo in their hand this day and age, but, like, in the cyberpunk media, like that stuff, you can get like <laughs> it's like right there next, like the noodle stand in like movies and stuff. Well, if someone gave me a giant two-handed dildo greatsword. I oh, so we answer it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as a baseball bat, but it's a two-handed weapon. It's pretty strong. I want a trident with three dildos. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I walk around town with that. New, new, uh, like Aquaman. You could, you could, uh, 3D model it, and you could have an actual mini for not so much for it. Um, no, I just walk around with the with the dildo trident. Oh, you yeah. want? Yeah. No, no, I just, I just walk around with some bitch. I thought you could. Uh, Kim. Yeah, I did watch them, the Space Bear one, and the 55-minute talk you guys had. So all the fucking magpies outside my window is filming me. Have to check in on, uh, check into that. <laughs> Why are people so stupid? Uh, like, at some point, they'll get a, they'll get those prosthetic limbs to, like, play the piano. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's coming. If they haven't already, somebody could have came up with one that plays, a, that you could play, like, a piano with. Because the piano, you need a lot of dexterity with. Well, I'm sure that somebody out there with, you know, very weak morals could probably speed the process up by, you know, less than ethical means to achieve the desired result that, you know, we can hook people up to machines and, you know, extend their capacities with uh, augmented uh, limbs and such. Octopus now with dildos. But with dildos, yeah. I, like, <laughs> having, first, having an... First, first day for body, like, you know, body augment, augment cybernetics like becomes legalized. Chris will be like, can I cut my arm off and get a trident dildo put there? Yeah, <laughs> fucking A, man. <laughs> I would like a dildo rocket launcher in my chest, please. Yeah, D <laughs> fucking dildo launcher in your chest, man. Like that's. Yeah. I'm with you, man. Like, I think we're on the same page. Formula here. One fuel. We'll just go. Poof. Yeah. We're on the same page. I like it. Yeah. We should. <laughs> we should. We should make a cybernetics. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should company. open up cybernetic for. Yeah, and what do you guys do? Oh, we're augmenting dildos so that we can actually use them outside of dildo. Want a dildo in your arm? No problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm all for it. Bluetooth. <laughs> Bluetooth fucking dildos. So, I was looking at starting another 
mini project. No way. Since the Scions is coming towards the end. Oh yeah, you're getting um, them. I'm picking up another box or two this weekend. Is that and the G.I. Joe ones you were working on? I'll be pretty darn close to 500 points to patrol I wanted. What? Huh? Cause gonna, I was doing a 500 point Scion Joe Force. Yeah. A patrol game size. Yeah. And I'm pretty darn close to finishing it. I just have to get two more boxes. Did you post picks? Huh? Well, I was going to post picks when it's all done. So that way, you know, oh, for you can sit there and look at all the dudes and see which ones are which characters. I don't want to... I want to spoil the surprise. Spoilers. Mm. Yeah, no spoilers. I want to see Dill. Or, no, Marie. Or... <laughs> <laughs> New G.I. Joe here. G.I. Joe, that's <laughs> it. That, that was the word I was looking for. I want to see dildos. Give me dildos. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> James, the Jonah Jameson guy. Just, I want to see pictures of dildos. Yeah, give me pictures of dildos. And Spider-Man. Put the, um... <laughs> Stormcasts of the universe. I already have the minis for that because I'm using half the Dominion box for that. Because half I'm doing in my Quick Loma scheme and that's being added on to my actual Stormcast army. And then the other half of the box is just going to be a Scion, or not Scion, Stormcast of the universe. So He Man themed. I gotta, I gotta get a Dark Oath. Um, chieftain and chop him up and chop up a storm cast to make a he man. But <clears throat> so I'm kind of looking for my next, you know, project. Project. Well, that's cool. Uh, Our of Circle is cool. I had an idea. He's got these little, like, straps that go around, like, his, I don't know, these yokes that go go over his back I think I want to introduce a little bit of splash of color onto this figure and I think I'm going to use those little cloths <clears throat> to illustrate I had that. an idea oh. yeah I am uh, I go ahead Sp idea. spit out your idea no I don't have an idea because I thought you were pointing at one area but then the stream caught up and you were pointing at another area oh <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, one. there's like these little wraps that are around his yoke. Yeah, and, I see him. Yeah. And I'm going to paint them something else. Just mixing it up. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of liking this. Taking something in 40K or AOS and then adding like a pulp culture, uh, a pulp culture, pulp, uh, what? Pop culture reference. <laughs> Can't work today. Cannot brain today. I have the dumb. But I'm kind of liking you know, taking 40k or AOS and then adding a pop culture reference to it or something. Oh, like combining something 40k and yeah, Age of so Sigmar? Yeah, like and... 40k and G.I. Joe. You know, Stormcast and He-Man Masters of the Universe. Do uh, Transformers or Thundercats? What would I do for Thundercats? I guess I could do like a Warcry. Warcry. I have no idea. Doing Beast for Warcry, they're already like halfway there. <laughs> right. Could do Thundercats. Uh, Kim. At least in this part of the world, we uh got real education with the phone in hand, and he cuts it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, in, in Total Recall. Uh, the original Teal Recall is way better. The new one, it's not horrible, but it's not as strong. I could do, I could do Thundercats with uh, the Untamed Beasts because they have like a cat thing with them already. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but then add some 40k to them. What would you mix them with? Well, they're AOS. That's what I'm saying. I thought you were mixing Age of Sigmar in 40k, but with a pop culture thing. No, no, no. Oh. Taking 40k or AOS, like a GW thing. And then Pulp Culture. Oh, I thought you were taking both game systems and then adding them together and then putting a Pulp Culture spin on it. I mean, I could. I could take, because I have, like, from some of the Mechanicus stuff, I have, like, cybernetic ones. I could put yeah. eggs and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, why not just go completely out there with some of these ideas, right? Like, you it know. It could be, um, 
forget who the leader of the Thundercats is. Lino. Lino. Lino could have like a robotic leg and a power sword. Or a wraithbone dildo. Yes. So he's not a bone singer. <laughs> ah, bone singer. Uh, I see what you did there. That was the name of an Eldar unit, was it not? That yep. was that model, right? Yep. Yeah, the the guy with the big antler horns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what? I love being an adult. <laughs> what? I love being an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it sucks. Well, it feels like you're just a big kid. <laughs> I well, isn't it obvious? I'm sitting here playing with my toys, yeah. man. Come on. Yeah. Uh, being an adult is just spending the money you earn on things you want, like toys. Yeah, why not, right? I mean, like, you know, f- fuck uh, responsibilities. I don't want to get formula for the baby and diapers. Fuck that. I'm going to get more space marines. Yeah, and dildos. And dildos. <laughs> and dildos shaped like space marines. I got it. That's right. I got to I gotta get all this, all this hobbying in before, you know, I settle down because then, you know, I can't spend as much money on the fucking plastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kim, I did see a video the other day of a new type of arm prosthesis and that it worked with the nervous system and could lift a dumbbell that was five uh, kilograms after wrapping the fingers around it one by one. Pretty impressive. Yeah. I've seen some other stuff. Yeah. Where like even some people who were 3d printing and they had like full mobility, but like the, um, the, the, essentially it's a bionic limb. It, it had connectors that ran up, uh, and into the uh, pectoral muscle and the back uh, shoulder blade muscle and so it could detect your movement of what you would do and so essentially i guess it goes by um i guess what is described as phantom limb syndrome i don't know what if like if that's you know the actual thing or you know what i mean like i'm not sure but apparently yeah it, it can detect what you intend to do even though like say you're you lost like your hand right and it could still detect further up your limb that you know your movements of what you would have done to accomplish that it'll interpret as signals for the limb that's that's what i understand also is you have to if you were to use that cybernetic limb you have to kind of remember how to move that hand yeah yeah it, it goes it, it relies on like the nerve like the muscle memory or whatever further up your arm it goes yeah. it goes to the big muscle groups yeah yeah so uh, big, big movements in your brain. Let's say you're twisting your wrist, uh, would translate to something on the app, which they could just plug in to your nervous system. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Um, or like squeezing your hand really hard. Because like, I don't think that technology is far out as we think. Because, well, if you look at uh, apparently with the the Apple Watch. It can, you can do gestures with it on your wrist and it can detect your movement. So it watches that little group of, of whatever's going on here and it knows what gestures you're making with your hands by just looking at this space on your wrist. I thought that was really cool. I'm moving my fingers. (laughs) What? I just instinctively moved my fingers just to feel like what the fuck does it do yeah like i i have no idea how they figured that shit out but yeah it just it's just watching the way those those limbs move but i mean like those new watches they detect your heart rate they detect like all sorts of shit do you know like but yeah i was shocked that you can in fact do gestures so you can you know scroll through stuff and you know i mean like you can answer your watch just by doing gestures with your hand as opposed to like going over and you know trying to you know dial in kind of thing right I just thought it was interesting. Uh, a friend of mine who uh, I played D&D with, he used to have a very, very smart watch. I will uh, tell him when he is getting too excited or his heart rate is too high or maybe he should eat something, all that stuff. Uh, we had a horror campaign, which I DM'd, and his watch would go off every now and then. Oh, because he was getting like, excited. Are you okay? <laughs> yes, I'm doing something right. That's funny. Not for him, but I mean, you know. Oh, yeah, no, he, he enjoyed it. 
like it was like the good thrill. Right. That's cool though. So I was I felt validated by a piece of technology. <laughs> I think I will do a Warcry Warband Thundercat stream. Why not? Because it's a box of 10 dudes and the cast, I, it, I could cover the main the main core and then, you know, branch out with some of the side characters. Yeah, there's all sorts of directions you could go with that shit. I mean, just the idea and of... It's box, so it's not like an intensive project. So. Well... Like, it's a really fun idea that you're doing with, like, uh, the Scions, because, you know, you're you're incorporating something, you know, classic, like, G.I. Joe, and, you know, bringing it to the, the 40K setting, and it's fun. A fun idea. And, uh, I wholeheartedly endorse it. Wholeheartedly. Like, there's a hole in my heart. So I'm kind of excited to get the Stormcast and Mover started because I already have a model picked for uh, Sorceress, Man at Arms, He Man. I just gotta get a Dark Witch Chieftain to chop him up. Um, I'm not sure what other characters I'll pick. Probably Tila because Tila's a fun one. I could get another Andrasta when she comes out, apparently, because she has the same haircut as Tila in the new Masters of the Universe stuff on Netflix. I still never finished that one. I haven't even started. I haven't had time. There's a lot of things on Netflix I wanted to watch. I haven't had time. There's a lot of things in general, like on Amazon Prime, Hulu, all all that crap that I haven't had time to. I even I even subbed to 100 plus, but have yet to watch anything because I haven't had time to watch anything. One I've been really, really interested in that I've been enjoying watching is C on Apple. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very interesting show. It's um, just just stri strictly speaking of like world building really really interesting like what would the future world be like if you couldn't see and the whole population of the planet couldn't see what would that world be like what would civilization be like which is interesting we'd all be listening to Stevie Wonder It's like 500 years in the future, and everything is basically, well, spoiler, uh, very primitive-like. Everything's become very tribal. Which for many, you know, makes a lot of sense that it would return to such a state. But it's kind of interesting because some of the the uh, the kingdoms although kingdoms isn't the right word but um the forms of societies like one is a matriarchy the other one or yeah monarchy and the other one is more of a a republic it's just interesting i like interesting i'm kind of excited to uh convert up sorceress because um because that one's going to be a lot of sculpting as opposed to either just coloring or painting a model a certain way or cutting up a model because i have to sculpt the uh is it an eagle she's wearing yeah 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 she has i know what mini i'm going to use there was a uh stormcast wizard and dominion they have like a little like staff and stuff i forget what the unit's called oh yeah the one with the ugly uh the one that has the that you can get comes with two head options and the normal unhelmeted head and one with like the the faceless mask yeah that one. and i clipped off the uh what, what you call it big stupid thing on the neck 
What's it called? Collar. I have to look at the <laughs> You know, collar. <laughs> Excuse big me. fucking Dracula collar it looks stupid. <laughs> oh yeah, well I have that on my one bin just for my Stormcast army. I would sit there and just kind of trim that off because I'd have to sculpt yeah. the eagle head because she's wearing like an eagle head as like the hood, and it comes down almost like a cape. So you know, I'd color the uh, spear dudes that come with her in the box uh, as uh, just the normal. Um, what are they called, like, Royal Guard or something? They're basically colored, like, Manet Arms. Manet Guards? I remember what they're... I think they're just called Royal Guards and Watchers or something. <laughs> uh, ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. Kim, my Samsung watch do that. Oh, yeah? That's cool. I am waiting on the new Warcry box to arrive. And it got a model that is practically is Conan in it. Oh, the new war, yeah, yeah, uh, the Blood Oaths, or Dark Oaths? The Dark, Dark Oath, yeah. Dark Blood Oath? <laughs> yeah, they're Dark Oath. They're... Pick in Discord. Oh, these guys, yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah, oh, he's, frick, he's almost a spitting image of uh, Conan. Dude, you should totally do his skin, like he, he like how he looks in the first movie, with the uh, white and black zigzag pattern on him. That'd be cool. If I was painting that dude, yeah, I'd, pro I'd, I'd probably lean very heavy on the uh, the Conan imagery. Just because, you know, why not? But yeah, that model's really cool. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take a quick second here. I am going to show you guys what I think we'll work on tomorrow. Uh, hold on. Maybe I better double check. I can actually talk about it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just checking my my thing here. Checking my thing. You know, my oh. thing. Yeah. Your dildo collection? <laughs> it's a comparison for the dildo collection. Oh, you know what else I, was, I wanted to do? Is take Sisters of Battle. And then take the, uh, the Kinari bits, like the wings and stuff. The, uh, what is it? The Daughters of Cain. For, uh, yeah, I can talk about this. Okay. Age of Sigmar. So, like, the snake ladies, but they also have, like, the harpy ladies in there. Take the wings from that harpy lady kit and put them on Sisters of Battle and, like, have them all, like, vampires and stuff. Wait! Alright. So. Yeah, harpy wings. I hear you. Yeah. Right. Put them on Sisters of Battle for, uh, vampire... I thought that would be neat. So, tomorrow, for tomorrow's stream. Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow. I think I will open up. Well, I'll probably open up both, but. So, the good folks over at G-Dubs, uh, I guess I was supposed to get this earlier, yeah, but. You told, you told me you got something in the mail the other stream time. Well, I was like. Yeah, quit, quit interrupting me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I'm getting to it, man. I'm getting to it. Okay, so, good folks over at G-Dubs sent me this stuff. And, uh, yeah, so I'll probably either assemble the Fire Raptors. Still got the shrink wrap on it. You can see it's all nice and shiny still. But I think we will do, because it's only one model, it'll probably take me two hours to assemble it. So, I think we'll do the Thunderhawk. Is that... Does that sound like a plan? Welcome up, bad boy. Yeah. I think we'll do that tomorrow. It's It looks fun. I still have no idea what I'm going to do my space rings. Because I am going to paint them up. But no idea what I'm going to do. I mean, I have ideas, but... Um, I'm kind of leaning towards painting them in your custom chapter. Yeah, you think? I, I don't want to do them red, though. Because oh you don't want to paint them red because I was saying like Thunderhawk doesn't yeah. like, want to borrow its name from like a version of the Thunderbird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you use the or is it? Yeah, you a... use that for your uh, custom chapter. Yeah, the more. Thunderbird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I thought it'd be a neat tie-in. Yeah, I mean, like, if I wanted to stay really strict with my um, my idea of the chapter and everything like that, my chapter is not a first founding, so it's not so anyway, like they wouldn't have. Well, the, the Thunderhawk wouldn't have been named for them, right? Well, yeah. But, I mean, you, you know, oh, shit. you could. It's not like it's, you know, set in stone or anything like that. But as I'm still kind of, you know, mulling over the idea of, like, you know, the, the backstory to, to the chapter and everything. Well, if it helps in any way, uh, the White Scar's home planet of Chigoris is has not been very imperialized aside from the Fortress Monastery. So, one, and a, a lot of the books were... The Khan goes back to his home planet because he likes to go back, you know, fairly often because it is, like, you know, his home, I guess you could say. Um, the, so the people of the planet don't know what a freaking space marine is. They know who the Khan is, but the Khan doesn't show up in his space marine armor when he visits. He, he you know, dresses up in the... City the clothes. Yeah. So um, when they come down in their Thunderhawks and crap, they literally think, because they have never met a space marine before, and they've never actually seen them, they just see, like, the flames in the sky. They think it's, like, angels descending down. Yeah. Or some kind of, like, spiritual, like... If they describe it as, like, angels. I forget. That That's that's how they often describe all the space marines on a majority of the worlds, right? Because, like, in the Imperium, there is every iteration of of human in the imperium right there's there's humans that are like stone age to the current technology levels right maybe even past the technology levels it's like the angels coming down on like their fire horses or something like that yeah. to uh to pick to pick up you know the chosen warriors yeah to uh fight you know in the heavens this is how the the native people of Chigoris describe it because they they have never physically they they've seen these ascended warriors come back but they're never dressed as a space marine they just see big muscle man right because uh in lore the khan wanted to keep his planet kind of like not imperialized kind of leave it the same so the only thing really like imperium of man on the planet is the uh the fortress monastery that um is hidden hidden away from uh the normal people of Chigoris. Now, wouldn't that break Imperial Decree? I guess, but Space Marines conducting stuff on their home world, they tend to get a, lo a lot more leeway. Do they? According to the book. <laughs> well, because, I mean, like, they, they get, because they get, seems like they get labeled traitors all the time, so, you know. White Scars had the White Scars and Khan have the label the traitor, and apparently, Big Papa Big E was perfectly freaking fine with it. So, <laughs> granted, the Khan was a Primarch, so he might have you know gotten a little more say. I guess it's good to be a Primarch, I guess. <laughs> so, so Chigoris currently is, aside from the uh, Dark Eldar, great. And tough is it's kind of the same as it was before the Imperium showed up. So basically, they didn't need the Imperium. Basically. <laughs> okay. Basically, I mean, somebody's going to be like, um, actually, uh, in this book, if the Imperium wasn't there, they wouldn't have gotten eaten by Tyranid. Because Tyranid showed up. And I'd be like, oh, okay. But as far as I know, yeah. It, it wouldn't have made a difference if the Imperium showed up to Chigoris because they built a fortress monastery monastery and then left. But I think they did that for a couple places because I think for the Space Wolves on Fenris, um, the, 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 the uh, normal uh, Fenrisian people, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. These, these fake planets. <laughs> so, I would say Fenrisian. Um, the Fenrisian people, um, they're 
kind of aware what a space marine is but not like totally aware. They think they're like these mystical beings or something. I'm not a super space marine player, but I remember reading a book and it was <laughs> a describing book? like one of the tribes of Fenris, like one of the people running into running into a what is it like a they're the space wolf version of a pack marine because they all have weird names for shit. Running in, basically one of these tribesmen running into that pack marine and thinking it's like like a god of like the forge and not like you know a space marine. Obviously, they they, they thought it was like this mystical being of the like of like the forge. Are you a mystical being of the forge? No. <laughs> the average person. No. <laughs> not really. So I think. I think lore wise, space, space marine home planets like where they have their main fortress monastery. If they have a home planet, um, I think they're allowed a little bit more le- leeway on how things are run on that planet. I wouldn't think so. I mean, that's the whole point of imperial yeah. decrees. Yes. That's why. That's why entire worlds get bombed to bring them into compliance. Well, because the Space Marine homeworlds typically didn't need to be bombed to be brought into compliance because that's typically where, like, well, at least with the founding chapters. Yeah, but that that's a different time. Because it was the Emperor commanding everything. All right, so let me rephrase. Instead of all Space Marine homeworlds, if your first founding chapter, i.e., you know, the Primarchs, Actual, like, hard, yeah. un, I guess you got a little bit more leeway on how your planet was run than uh, an imperial guard world or an agriculture world or whatever. I guess is the way to put it, because a lot of these planets, like um, the Blood Angels' home planet, you know, White Scar's home planet, shit, even Nocturne for the Salamanders, seem relatively untouched by the Imperium relatively speaking, compared to all these other Imperial planets that we read about in the novels and stuff. Isn't the uh, Raven Guard home planet just a dark ball of mass that just nobody can fucking see? Or was a moon? That's no. Or was it like a mining planet, but their fortress monastery was on a moon. Because cause a lot of the, like, Space Marine homeworlds still have, like, tribes and stuff, and they like, fight wars with you. Like, the mort- mortificators or whatever are still, like, have cannibalistic. Yeah, isn't the Blood Angels supposed to be like that? Them. I don't think the Blood Angels ones were cannibals, but... Yeah, their, their world is supposed to be like this ash wasteland. Like it's an ash the, wasteland, yes. The people are all mutated and shit, and when they get uh, put into the sarcophagus, they become a, they come out looking like sanguineous. Yeah, but like... I the more, the the more, the more actors... The, the space marines that like wearing bones. <laughs> the mortificators? Mortifactors? I don't know. Um, Their home planet... And their um, audio book is just tribes of cannibals running around, wearing cool. the bones of their enemies. Interesting. So it seems like, I guess, to like feed into the, I guess, warrior culture of space marines, that their planets are typically left alone, because a lot of the space marine planets were, I guess, warrior cultures, because, like, Chigoris with the White Scars and the Khan, they were nomadic tribes of, like, cavalrymen, I guess you could say. The closest thing I could think of. Um, Ball is an ash wasteland of mutated people fighting each other. Yeah. Can't think of too many space marine planets, except for... all. Ultramar. Ultramar is like a, like an Imperial metropolis. It's the only it's that and I guess that the Imperial Fist had a homeworld before they resided to the Phalanx and got Terra. 
I'm sure their home world was like more imperialized, but it seems like a lot of the Space Marine home worlds were just kind of left alone. I thought Imperial Fist Earth was their home world. Uh, Dorn was Dorn was found somewhere else. I think now Earth is technically their home world, but well, where the Primarchs come from is is not really the thing because the Primarchs were abducted and scattered throughout the galaxy. Well, yes. But what the chapters call, like, their home, it's like the White Scars, Chigors, tend to be corresponding to where that Primarch was found. Except for the Imperial Fist, because they are the Sentinels of Terra. I don't think... Because I think Dorn left his, the system he was found in, and I don't think he ever went back. Imperial Fists also get the privilege of recruiting from a lot of different places because they even have in, Nec in Necromunda they have a fortress monastery and they recruit from Necromunda too. Yeah, that that makes more sense um, for Space Marines because it's like uh, the um, the Black Templar because basically when when they take a world, well they'll just take a bunch of people in. Mm -hmm. And make them space marines, right? Because real realistically, the only reason you want to have any kind of previous warrior culture is because obviously they have uh, a sense of honor, and that's something you can build upon, you know, to make obviously uh, an extremist, a zealot, because space marines are zealots, and you know it's a foundation to start with. Versus, you know, just guy filling out an application and, uh, you know, what, what's the 401k situation with being a space marine? You know what I mean? Like, it's, no, no, you want somebody who's, who's yeah, you, you want somebody who's already pretty much indoctrinated into the system of honor. And that's why you want to recruit from those worlds. But, I mean, realistically, to, you know, not realistically, but as far as making a space marine, no, it's... You know, it really doesn't matter because, I mean, like, if you have an extreme where Ball is a bunch of mutants, which is, I think, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that goes against Imperial Decree, right? Mutants? There's, they're not uh, all mutants, but yes, there are mutants running Ball, and they, like, fight with the non-mutants, and the mutants fight with each other and stuff. Right, so the planet should be virus bombed because it's, there's mutants all over the place. If, they, if they'll virus bomb a planet for a gene sealer incursion... Why can't they virus bomb Ball for having mutants all over the place, right? So if if you if you can take a human form, and that's all mutated up, and make it a space marine, then you can pretty much do any human, and make it a space marine. So there's no restrictions for making a space marine if you can go from one extreme, being little little mutants running around and then make them these angelic battle hardened warriors right anybody can be a space marine even you little timmy yeah even you little timmy you can be a space marine one day you could be a space marine if you you know conduct yourself with honor and you know what i mean and so that's why it's often these um, warrior culture type of tropes that you know are you know the imagery for Space Marines, because that should make for better warriors. But realistically, okay. you want zealots, because that's what Space Marines are. Does that make sense? Or am I way off? <laughs> what? Another another idea. Well, I'm, I'm, I've talked about it in the past, but... What there are mutants on Ball, and there are not me. There are non mutants on Ball. So I, I had to look up like if the mutants were still there, if they got like purged. Right. From what I understood from from the lore before, yeah. was that Ball was an ash wasteland, where the mutants are running all over the place, yeah. and that's where the Blood Angels recruit from because that's where Sanguinius was found. Yeah, because they have because Sang. Sanguinius was found by a tribe of the non-mutants. So either the Imperium is all about purge the mutant, or uh, it's okay once in a while. Well, 
they are the okay it's once in a while cause technically according to the Imperium both Ogren and Ratlings are mutants yeah but they're they're subclassification called um abhumans abhumans yeah so they are the they are there is a short list of abhumans that are like acceptable right because mutants. because the, the mutation is stabilized it's a stable mutation because the squats, the ratlings, the augrins, and beastmen were all abhumans. So I'm guessing that whatever they call the inhabitants of Fall that are mutated, I guess, that are stable enough that the Imperium, right. or or so because it, it is Sanguinius's homeworld, they turn a blind eye to it. Which it's the Imperium, and they've done stuff like that before. Well, I mean, then, then what? What is an imperial decree worth in the forty in Warhammer Forty Thousand? Then how zealous the Inquisitor holding the imperial decree feels would be. Right, but an Inquisitor is the only extension of the High Lords, and if the if the if the law is not respected, then what's the point? I get what you're saying too. That's just, <laughs> I, I, I All I'm saying is, is it's silly made up stuff. And when you start yeah, yeah. Pl- poking holes at it and trying to come at it logically, it all breaks down. That's my point. <laughs> you cute plasma gun. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, don't don't delve too deeply in, and try to rationalize these things because it's made up for a narrative. And again, plot will always win over previously established lore. So having said that, there is absolutely no reason why you couldn't have female space marines. I knew we were gonna come. <laughs> like, you know, now I'm having these like started like you know. Yeah, there's no reason. I was like, it's coming. You knew I was. I was gonna circle around back to that one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> You're ready. But at least as far as lore, which I find interesting, is that Space Marines, Space Marine homeworlds, like, spa- let me read. chapters that recruit from a single world tend to be given more leeway on how that world is run, as opposed to, like, a fleet-based chapter or crusade chapter where they kind of just pull in whatever. Right, but tactically, that's very stupid and irresponsible. Oh, no, yes. Because... <laughs> Because all Abaddon has to do is, is virus bomb that world, and that chapter can't draw any new recruits. Well, that's what the Space Wolves are suffering from right now, because, uh, what's, what's his name, Magnus, showed up on Fenris and killed a whole bunch of people. Oh my gosh. Man, I just whipped this thing yesterday. Jeez, dude. It must be dry in here. Oh, I was running my humidifier, though. But yeah, um... It, it's it's all silly. I mean, you know, you can't take it seriously. It's made up stuff, right? I know people get their shit in the wad, you know, trying to explain away. And no, no, you can't do that because of this. No, you can't. Plot always wins in these situations. If G-dubs wants to write something a particular way, guess what's going to happen they're going to write it that way and that'll be lore It'll we all can't do shit about it well i mean you can do something about it i mean if it really upsets you that much the, a change or something like that well you can stop playing pretty yeah. simple you can if, sp- if it upsets you that much <laughs> yeah if it upsets you that much you can stop playing you can stop buying this stuff you can stop or make up your own head cannon. Yeah, or make up your own shit. I mean, same with like, you know, when the rules editions change and people start losing their shit. Well, guess what? You don't have to play by those rules. You can play by whatever rules you like. Whatever edition. If you loved second edition Warhammer 40,000, holy shit, you can play second edition for Warhammer 40,000. Oh, talking about second edition Warhammer 40,000. I like the people that go... It was so much simpler back then. I was like, did did they play the same second edition that everybody else played? <laughs> yeah, no, th- th- those people are 
they're they're <laughs> like, reminiscing through rose colored glasses. Like the game was rife with inconsistencies. It it how much it it wasn't you know like we had a lot of fun back in the day, but that's because we're remembering the fun times we had with you know our gaming friends. And yeah, if you really think hard, you can remember, t- you know, going back and forth with your friends going, well, no, this says this rule goes this way. No, that rule says, no, it, that doesn't affect this rule. And you know what I mean? And there was a lot of that way back in the day. And Games Workshop was not nowhere near as community friendly as it is now. Um, because like you get like one codex for the entire year you'd get one new model for like six months and a frequently asked questions, a fact, right? Would be like two or three years after a fucking codex dropped. So like it took forever to get any of those kind of uh, resolutions. Forever. So, yeah, people who um, talk about the, the, the days of your... Jeez, please, monkeys. Holy carmolies. Thank you. That's, all, know, that's people on YouTube. Does edition have the character generator that Rogue Trader had? Uh, what's that? Did, did second edition have the character generator Rogue Trader had? Um, Where it was like the D300 thing, and it's like a list of like things your character had? No, that's Rogue Trader. That was specifically for Rogue Trader? Yeah. Okay, I don't know if second edition had that or not. A, a random character generator? No. Uh, there might have been a compendium or like a chapter approved book that came out and might have had a character generator, but I don't really recall random characters. It might have been later. Because I, I was about to say, because I didn't want to make myself look dumb, because uh, cause I knew Rogue Trader had it, but I wasn't sure if second edition had it. Because I was like, ah, oh, yes. Simple, simple edition of the game where I have to roll in a D three hundred chart to build my character. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, no. But, well, because like Rogue Trader was more that was an a tabletop RPG, yeah. Than it was. Yeah, but I wasn't sure if uh, Second Edition had it. No, I don't recall Second Edition having mm-hmm. character profile. Like everything was like halfway through somewhere in 40k now like i never started 40k at the very beginning of it because 40k came out in 87 i didn't i didn't get into this stuff until 88 and i'm pretty sure i did not get into 40k until 89 90 somewhere around that so that's when i got into 40k because i i was into space hulk and i was reading through the fluff of that and that led me into being curious about Warhammer 40,000 because it talked about, you know, the greater universe. And I was uh, on a trip in Florida. And so I would, you know, took a cruise over to a hobby shop and saw the, the main rule book. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'll screw it. I'll pick it up. And yeah. And then I was, you know, hooked into 40K from that point. But it was Space Hulk that was the gateway drug for me getting into uh, 40K. And yeah, like, that's just really where it all spirals out for me. Like, you know, 40k was it because that shit was cool, you know. So I blame Space Hulk. That's the culprit. Oh, but up, 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 up. But yeah, second edition, I don't recall any character generators. Gotcha. So I know second edition was kind of like a transitionary period where it was like dropping the R- the RPG out there. Yeah, the RPG element to going more traditional like war game, but it wasn't like till like third edition where it became like a, I guess, a war war game. I don't know. Yeah, well, the, the foundation for a tabletop, you know, strategy game was established in rogue trader but it wasn't a fully formed thing it was still more narrative driven right Mm -hmm. like rogue trader to play a good game of rogue trader you really should have a gm so he can throw um you know wrenches at you and that's what i was trying to do with my necromunda campaign but it's kind of hard because you have to rank everybody would have to be there at the same day 
Yeah. Uh, Being a GM is a lot of work. Oh, it's fun work. Sure, yeah. yeah 100%. Glad I'm not a GM for an RPG group or something. Like yeah. Like that... I'd never be able to wrangle everybody at that point. No, <laughs> it's that's a herding I'm cat not. situation. But there's the thing. You, you don't wrangle. You just go say yes. <laughs> oh, ra- wrangling as getting everybody in the same room at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, like... that's, that's not on you. That's on everybody. Well, yes. But, you know, are, if you're so a little aggressive many, about it, it kind of scares some people off. They don't want to deal with that. And, you know, like if you're like, be here at this time because we're going to roll for our characters and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and then they're like, oh, fuck, whatever. You know, I got so shit this to do. guy's telling me what to do. Fuck yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Right. Some people are like, that. I'm kind of like that where I'm like, yeah, fuck you. Don't tell me what to do. I, 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 I roll to my own beat. Well, can't, can't. Uh, play the Aliens RPG with Chris now, darn. Because <laughs> yeah. he won't, because sh- he won't show up when you tell him to, just because you told him to show up at this time. <laughs> exactly, exactly it. I'm, I'm a difficult human being. I'm, I'll freely admit so it. I'm difficult. It and you say what time, what day works best for you? There we go. And then I'll go. Ah, this what day? And then I'll still flake All out. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then you go. Okay, Chris, show up that day. Like, no, fuck you. <laughs> Exactly. Would you like, Don't be interested in doing it on that day when you say you are available? It's yeah. It's kind of like <laughs> to make sure that I'm part of the gaming group. I think you basically have to do like an intervention. Intervention. Yes. Yeah, so you have so, to physically go up. <laughs> and, like entrap. You have to entrap me too. And, uh, and no, freaking not... like strap him to a chair like it's like freaking Saul or something like want to play a game <laughs> yeah exactly that's that's so you, you make the person think that they came up with the idea of doing it on that day <laughs> and then I go yeah sure I'm, I'm, I'm done yeah exactly I'm I'm a difficult person I I, I freely admit it no I'm, I'm difficult <laughs> sometimes I just do it for gigs but then sometimes I just do it because I don't know I'm inconsiderate i suppose but yeah just because just because sometimes i do it just for giggles sometimes i do it because i'm inconsiderate i'm an asshole <laughs> <laughs> you know i you were speaking of uh, getting into not to abruptly change the topic uh, you're speaking of getting into a warhammer so uh, tomorrow my baby bro is coming and visiting me for a day he has no idea What's in store for him? <laughs> That's I cool. See this model, it'd be cool. You want to try painting it? You want to try playing it? Now, does does he already have a um, a war gaming bend as far as like you know being into uh, this kind of stuff? Not yet. No. No, but I think it's 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 in his genes somewhere. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, well, he's well, at least he's going to paint a model. Whether he likes it or not. <laughs> See, I've never, puts I, the paint on the model or he gets the hose again. I've yeah. I've gotten my son into all this to my own detriment. Um, but I've never gotten my, my daughter into this. The painting, I've I've actually had her, you know, do a bit of painting, but I've never, you know, like, honey, do you wanna play Warhammer? Do you wanna, you know, do this, do that, you know? Just she showed an interest one day uh, of painting a miniature, so I let her paint a miniature, and then that was it. She, it. That satisfied her curiosity about all this, and you know, she continued to do her thing, and you know, that was. And I didn't push it. You know, it's okay. It's not for her today, anyway. <laughs> Maybe yet. one day. Yeah, yet. I've had family like that where they're like tangentially interested, where it's like they don't want to play. But, like, they take an interest in what I'm doing. Yeah. And I, th- I think that's probably more for them just, you know, showing that they're interested in what you're doing. You know, like, they're, ju- they're just yeah. more concerned about that than actually whatever it is that you're into, right? Yeah, I remember just right. one time, just out of the blue, my stepmother had bought me a, a box of Tau. Yeah. I like, didn't ask for it or anything. It just like. Well, she was trying to score points. Interested enough that I was interested in it that she went out on her own to uh, 
you know, figure out what stuff is. Yeah, well, that sounds like she was trying to, you know, reach you. Yeah. You know what I mean? She was she was trying to uh, um, make a connection with you. That's what that sounds like. Get in, get on your good side. As uh, some step parents uh, are off to do, you know, mm-hmm. which is understandable. And uh, you know, in the end, I think in that situation, you're the winner because. It, She's she's trying to uh, you know impress you yeah. and curry favor as it were. I'm an easy person to impress. <laughs> well, that that that's good. Yeah, but um, I do agree that it does feel like step parents are, are like that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, there, yeah, there is nothing wrong with it. You know, I mean, it's it's a win-win kind of situation. I mean, you know, because obviously. They're learning something about you. They want to, you know, uh, be friends with you in some regard, right? They want to be on your good side. They want to be, you know, connected in some fashion. And so, yeah, I mean, like, it's it's not a bad thing when, you know, somebody does that. And they gift these kinds of things, things that you're actually interested in, right? It's not like she got you a gift card for, you know, J.C. Penny for you to go get a new pair of pants or something like that, right? Which, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well you, but i mean like you know what i mean like it's it's that kind of thing at least she took the intro or she took the steps to try and figure out what you were into and then get something that you are actually going to like and you're going to actually make use of right so i mean good on her for do, doing her homework you probably don't talk to her do you uh she sadly passed away a couple years ago so then no no. <laughs> Unless you're doing fucking seances. <laughs> Get the fucking Ouija board out. Yeah. <laughs> no, but did, did you have a good relationship with her, though? Yeah. Yeah? Well, that's good, then. Then it worked. I mean, when I was over, yeah. Yeah. Well, then it worked. I mean, you don't remember her negatively, do you? Nope. So, that's good. Yeah. It worked. Buying you boxes of Space Marines worked. <laughs> Get or whatever, whatever. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> We're not being pedantic ourselves. Today. Yeah, I know. Holy fuck, I'm just trying to make a point here. Like... <laughs> no, I know. I'm just... <laughs> I know. Who joined us anyway? Oh, Killer Whale. What's happening? Pizza. Killer Whale's being quiet in the chat. Or in the voice chat channel. That's because I just realized I had myself muted. Holy fuck, nice. you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Fuck you up. Very well, and how are you guys doing? Not too bad. Just doing a bit of painting. I was doing painting too, but then I had a dinner break. But now I feel completely stuffed and I need to lie down because two hamburgers is a bit too much. Oof, yeah. Was it big boy hamburgers? Well, it's like hamburgers, like homemade hamburgers, so I I don't know. Were they supposed to be big? I don't know, but those fill you up good. It's just that I'm I'm amazed at how, like I'm in Netherlands right now, and I'm amazed at how low quality the hamburger meat here is. Like I had to make my own hamburger meat just because the one that I got from the store always tasted like garbage. You know, like those really crap hamburgers you get at, what, like gas stations? Yeah, that's what they tasted like. Overprocessed, overprocessed meat, or just past the expiry date. I don't know. Maybe they're cutting it with something. <laughs> okay. People. It didn't have all the People. extra shit that they put in this glorious like McDonald's burger. <laughs> 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 the the flavor enhancers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, this thing has just, it's like, it's, I don't even know. Boy, YouTube's going off. I love how you say oi like a Norwegian. What? Is that a thing over in Canada? What? To go oi? 
Mm. When, you, when you're a bit startled, you go, oi. I don't know. I, I we do that over here. I do it all often. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, that, that's like our oops sound. Or oh fuck. I don't know. It's something I've said for a long time. Huh. I don't know if that's a thing. Well, that's uh. That is the thing over here. I imagine there's lots of people who say it, or some iteration of it. For example, if we say "oi farm," that means "oh fuck." <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm on GW's website looking at Lord of the Rings, well, Battle for Middle Earth, and I kind of want to do an orc yeah, army. People into NFTs, and I'm like, what is an NFT? So I looked it up, and it just seems extremely silly. It's just a glorified cell certificate, isn't it? What is an NFT? It's a, some kind of a like cryptocurrency shit. Apparently, it's like a like you know how they make crypto coins. Well, apparently they use the same process to issue you a sales certificate that ties your wallet, not your persona, not your identity, just your wallet, to a specific URL that the that the company is hosting on their website. So it it just sounds silly. It does. They say that there is no way these things can be cracked, but, well, I mean, there is a hundred ways these things can be cracked. They're just tied to a wallet, and crypto wallets are only just protected by a single password from what I could understand. I looked into NFTs uh, briefly just because uh, I know, like, the uh, art community were basically looking for a way um, to, you know, not have their work appropriated and, you know, get copied and, you know, people make all sorts of prints and shit like that. So if you get an NFT for your artwork, that it protects it and you can actually create, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like, not an original piece, but like limited edition type of thing, right? Where there's only so many of this file in existence. So it creates value in that regard, as opposed to just, you know, a digital piece that could just be, you know, copied and uh, printed and, you know, shared. Well, you can still copy and print and share the NFT. What it, what it is, is you get a token basically saying, you are the owner of that picture. Because that's what NFT stands for. Non, that stands non-fungible token. Yeah. But so there is the absolutely itself. nothing that prevents people from stealing other set artwork and then selling it themselves yeah. for NFTs. So, so even if you have an NFT token, it doesn't mean that the authority that issued you yeah. was the owner of the picture. It could have been a random guy who right-click, copy-pasted the picture and then sold it to you. Because that's the thing with the NFTs now. The NFTs are the same picture, just slightly changed over, you know, a thousand iterations. Right. Because it's being used as, like, some kind of, like, cryptocurrency right now. It's specifically a monkey picture? <laughs> that's one yes, of the it is popular specifically ones. a monkey picture, but it's not a good monkey picture. One of the popular ones is specifically a monkey picture. There's a few, but just slightly altered images of some artists' work. And some artists have actually had their art stolen and then used for NFTs. Monkey picture. Yeah, it's like it's a really good idea in theory, but the, uh, but the actual execution is full of holes. Just so many holes. I think... So instead of, like, having a central authority or some sort, or at least a big community that essentially recognizes and validates ownership of art, so artists don't get their art copied, people decided to go through the decentralized cryptocurrency uh, way, and that doesn't work because cryptocurrencies are just scam-enabling garbage. Well, sure. I mean, it is all just to monetize these things just like crypto itself i mean it's it's essentially valueless there's nothing to of value to it 
And unfortunately, I mean, like a lot of people, a lot of artists fall prey to this stuff because they're looking for something for their digital artwork that can bring added value because that's what artists want to do as they create pieces. But that is the nature of the medium in which you work for any digital artists out there. It is artwork that has no physical value. It's not like you made that piece on a piece of canvas, right? Because it's a physical, actual object that you painted or created or sculpted or whatever. And so, yeah, this NFT thing allows people to, you know, assign a value to it. As opposed to just being some, you know, file, right? Heretic Scott. Yeah, Sup, nerds? Sup. Digital art is that everything's copyable, but I don't think NFTs is the way to go around it. What would you suggest? Honestly, I would suggest having some sort of, trying to organize some sort of, at least if not central, then regional authority or a big community of artists that can serve as central authority on who owns what. Because that's how it's done with art in the real world, the physical art. There is, uh, every country has its own uh, centrally governed, centrally managed, central commission that determines who owns what pieces of art. So what? who, dis, who deter, determines that? Well, I don't have all the answers, unfortunately, but I do know that NFTs are not the answer because it's, so far it has been powered nothing but scams and... One of the worst things that happens is that people get their art stolen. There is automatic Twitter bots that do that. If you post anything on Twitter, it can get turned into an NFT by a third party you don't even know about, and then sold for a neat profit. Right, but a forger can forge a painting. What stops that? Because after it's been sold as an NFT, you can't really resell it as an NFT. It's not just Forger forging a painting, it's Forger stealing your painting and selling it as an original and by... Uh, but that happens already with original and validating works. Validating your own attempts to sell it. But that happens already. It's been happening for years. Yeah. And the only way around it is by having an actual centrally managed, in some way, art authority that can actually verify that the person who's doing the selling is the person who drew the picture right but that's kind of hard for Otherwise, famous like artists who... free for all where you have stuff like this happening right but i mean a, a, an original pa thing. but an original picasso can still be forged and sold what stops that the fact that everybody the fact that the original painting is well People know where the original painting exists. People know who owns the original painting. So if you forge and sell a Picasso that somebody else already knows, people go simply check that the person who owns the Picasso still owns it and ask you, how did you get your hands on this? Ownership is a fundamentally social concept. I mean, social construct. It doesn't exist if society doesn't recognize that it exists. So in this way, I don't think NFTs do anything else that simple sales certificate wouldn't do. Uh, my point because being, you, my point being, is the, theft is going to occur regardless. Yeah. So why bother with NFTs? It's a horrifically inefficient way. That what else is there? to be empowering scams, even to even greater degree than just not having NFTs. One of the biggest issues with NFTs is that it provides a lot of anonymity to sellers. So you can't really catch art theft as easily as you could. And a lot of time what happens is essentially just people taking money and running. Like you pay to a person for an NFT or you pay for something and they take the money and run instead of fulfilling their promises. Because it's supposed to be decentralized and it's supposed to be anonymous and you don't really have knowledge of what per what person is who beyond their nickname that means they can easily just disappear have you recently been burned sorry 
Have you recently been burned? What's that? Burned, scammed, deceived. Oh, no. I'm just friends with a bunch of artists who are. Theft is going to happen regardless, no matter what system there is in place. As long as money is to be made, people will make it. Yeah, but there are better systems and worse systems. Just because all systems are fallible doesn't mean that they're all fallible to the same extent. No. And NFTs, from what I could understand, are very fallible. Sure. But whatever system comes out, it'll get cracked and fraud will be had. Nothing made by man is perfect. So any no, system I'm not saying it, but that's not So any argument. system that comes out will be fallible. Yeah, but we're we're, ch we're chasing an unrealistic more prone to fraud than We're chasing an things. unrealistic goal. I don't even I don't even have strong feelings about NFTs. Why am I arguing? I don't know. Why are you? I guess I just like to argue. That sounds that way. <laughs> I used to argue with people about politics, but that degenerated into unrestrained toxicity about a decade ago, so I don't do it anymore. Neither do I. It is ridiculous. It's far more fun to make jokes about dildos. It is. That's why what, what? I do it. Dildos. What? Yeah. It's, uh, it's the theme of uh, today. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Very great bringing up cyberpunk. <laughs> cyberpunk dildos. There we go. Cyberpunk dildos. I mean, like, you know, if we're going to talk NFTs, I mean, let's talk about, you know, cybernetic dildos. You mean, you mean NFTs? NFDs, <laughs> there we go. Non-fungible dildos. Transformers. To be fair, I'm fairly sure that uh, miniature painters are one of the few things, one of the few uh, of the modern painters who don't really have to worry about their works being copied. Uh, no. You can't quantum replicate a space marine, can you? No, because there's no money in it. So as soon as money's to be made at this, then yes, there will be deception. As soon as there's large amounts of money to be made, yes. That's why recasters are so prevalent. Because there's money to be made. I wouldn't say it's common, but there are people who commission like miniature paintings and then say that they painted that many. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's not, like, super common. So there's people out there claiming to paint something like a Richard Gray, and Richard Gray never touched it. Who is Richard Gray? He's a, a, a fairly well-known miniature painter. So it'd be like... Uh... When I say fairly well-known, I'm, I'm being a little bit... Uh, what's the word? Facetious? Yeah, it would be like... Um... He's a well-known artist. Not, not claiming, but it'd be like, okay, so you commissioned, painted a piece for me, Chris, okay, and then I turn around and sell it as my own piece. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah there was, that was a problem, I recall, quite a few years ago for um, these miniature painting competitions, Golden Demons and such. Somebody would paint it, then ship it to the other person, and then they would go win awards with that model so like a bunch of losers yeah again i mean if there's if there's a buck to be made yeah if there's a buck to be made somebody out there is going to try and make it legally or illegally not much you can do about it i want to go back to lord the middle earth game real quick so i want to paint a bad faction but i'm basically down to orcs do i want to paint mordor orcs Urukai, so Isengard, or do I want to do Gundabad, the new orcs from the hobbits? Are you asking me what you want to do? I have no fucking clue, dude. 
I say follow your heart. The the bad works is, uh, almost looks like a boar's head. And it's pretty cool. It sounds like you're saying Gundam bad. Gundam bad. G-U-N-D-A-B. So they're in the Hobbit miniatures. G-E-B-L. Okay. <laughs> evil. Evil. Show all evil. Yes. Show me really all like, evil. I really love it how uh, Battlefield Middle Earth or whatever it's called has good and evil. While the rest of the stuff Games Workshop produced has like evil, more evil, and most evil. Yeah. Evil. Well, it's lots of fun. The Middle Earth stuff is tied to an IP, so they have to represent. Yeah, I know, I know, but I'm still like it. Oh, yeah, I would go for the Gun Devout Orcs. Look at those guys. I mean, they're the smallest range of the evil stuff, but they just look so cool. <laughs> they have the coolness of the Urukai and, and the. Uh, Differentiate differentiation of the motor orbs. Because they even since they are the Hobbit and they are a newer line, they have the cool stuff on Fourth World, like the um, like the trolls you see in the Hobbit with their eyes gouged out and their limbs replaced with weapons. And yeah. There's a force on top with the chain pulling them back and forth. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> for the ones making the trolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. For the ones making the trolls that way. For the one driving it, it's pretty easy. He just pulls the chain which way hunts the troll again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Heretic Scott, skin looking creepy. Looks like you changed the tone of it. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, the, the whole goal was, if you recall, when I was working on the, the head, was to make the, the skin, you know, similar vibe to the head, so... Greenleaf Train, Chris, uh, or am I sick if my skin is the same color? Are you sick of this as this guy? Um, sick? I don't know about yeah. sick. Yeah, you might yeah be that's uh, probably not a healthy thing. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would say get some vitamin D in you. Yeah, go outside, tip your hand. Some D in you. Or get, just get some D in you. Maybe a dildo. Get a dildo. Yep, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Huck, 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 hey, enjoyed your chat with Jazza. Thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun talking to him. Um, he seems like a really great guy. Darn, I'm still amazed by how well you painted the skin. Look at all those smooth transitions. Just so many colors, but they all blend so beautifully. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, if you look really close, you can see all the little tide marks. And I feel stuff. like that's the whole thing about your models and somebody else's models. What's that? If you look, like, you see all the flaws on your models because you painted them, but the person who's never seen your model while you were painting it just going to see all the best parts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I get, I, yeah, I mean, we're, we're our own worst critics, right? So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because I can see, like, where I missed, where I've hit spots, and, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then yeah. you're not supposed to see the model all up in your face, are you? Eventually, I'm going to paint as well as you do, too. Eventually. Give me, like, ten years. Um, I don't know. It seems like people progress pretty damn quick these days. So, if you got let's get lots of practice, I think you... Well, in my case, it's more like I'm deliberately force grinding my skill at painting by... Did you I say don't it? know, by trying my absolute best every single time. I haven't finished my army yet, despite painting for a year. Hell, I f haven't finished a single squad. But I did get myself from, like, unable to base coat properly to being able to punch out some pretty damn good for tabletop miniatures, I think. Yeah, well, that that's all it takes, man. It's just, you know, being happy with your own work and just keep moving along at your own pace. Uh, you know, there isn't a... There isn't a standard for progressing through this stuff, right? It's not like, oh, well, it's, it, you know, like, it's even like uh, child care. You know, like they say, oh, well, you're at this age, you should be doing this. And at this age, you should be doing that. It that's This isn't like anything like that. Life isn't like that. You progress at your own pace. 
and you know you determine how fast how far you're going to go with all this i mean you could progress to a point where you want to enter competitions and then all of a sudden decide you know what fuck it i'm going to go and you know pursue uh, i don't know working with wood woodworking you know what i mean like you could change interests at the drop of a dime and th because this is a hobby you can do that you know you don't have to you know just very proud of the way I actually managed to zero in on the color scheme. I mean, it's a color scheme that Games Workshop made, but I modified it. And I tried multiple homebrewed color scheme beforehand, but none of them were as good as just modifying something that Games Workshop made. Right. <laughs> Uh, Kim, he's probably one of the best paint, best painters in the world, Mr. Gray. Richard Gray, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I I don't know anybody who is, I mean, other than maybe like Andy at Cult of Paint and, oh man, like who's still do? oh, I guess, uh, what's his name there? Um, Calvalo, I, I can't remember his first name is. Oh, sweet, merciful God. I'm looking yeah. at this guy and he's incredible. Yeah, there, there's there's quite a few people out there who are, you know, really 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 great this is like this isn't just photorealistic this is better this is photorealistic but with photoshop it's photorealistic with photo i'm not even sure what that means <laughs> it's like taking a photo and then editing it in photoshop so it looks even better i okay <laughs> I, I think i get what you're saying i think you get what you're saying kim sergio Cal calvo yeah he, he's a fantastic painter. Um, his non-metallic metal work, uh, honestly, I don't know anybody who's doing it better than him. Because I like the way he does non-metallic metal because he is taking in uh, to consideration the ambient of reflections. Everybody else who does non-metallic metals, they do the, the short form for it. Whereas Sergio, and a lot of pieces I've seen from him lately uh, and in the past, uh, he's doing non-metallic metal like in a realistic fashion and I, li I like that that's cool that's the only way i think i like non-metallic metal what was that i remember when i pick up that uh, thing let's look at it and uh, it was on the stream was yeah yeah his his work is really good yeah uh i'm not one for really gushing over other people's works uh, but his work is really really good his non-metallic metal is is excellent does it make me want to rush out and do non-metallic metal? Not at all. But I do appreciate the effort that he goes through to achieve that. And, you know, like, when you see good work, you have to say, that's some good work. Like, you know, yeah. you have to respect it, right? So, I, I respect his work. But yeah, it, do, it doesn't, when I see it, I don't think, oh my god, I wish I could do that. I don't think that at all. I'm not thinking, um, god, if only I could do that. Those kind of thoughts don't really enter my head. <clears throat> not that I don't think that his work has value or anything like that. It's just, you know, I'm... I'm just not envious. Sometimes when I look at really good mini painting... I get a bit overwhelmed because, like, how the hell am I ever going to match that? Practice. Time, practice and patience. Yes, exactly. You, you too can achieve those results. It's not like... Miniature painting is not a bo innate born skill. There are certain traits of this that, yeah, you know, if you're well adapted to it and, you know, you're physically able, but otherwise, no, this is all taught. This You can be taught... To do this stuff it's not like anybody pops out of the womb holding a miniature painting brush and is innately good at it you know i mean if you have the capacity to draw you have the capacity to do this well now drawing you can also learn as well you, you know there's people that you know never drew in their life and then all of a sudden take up drawing and all of a sudden become really really proficient in it. again it I is all practice actual drawing on canvas someday well don't wish just do it just pick it up 
and just start doing it. Just start draw doodling and you know drawing circles, drawing squares, drawing triangles. You know, and then all of a sudden you find yourself drawing shadows on those circles and squares, and you know what I mean. Like it's just, it's all practice, man. It's all practice. I honestly feel like uh, I, I, I start to. It sounds like you're living in your head, and you need to relax, and forgive yourself. Do not be afraid to make a mistake. You're well, you're hol you're holding well, yourself I mean, up to a certain standard. Day. I'm like on six different builds for exactly this sort of for exactly this thing to happen, and it's happening but very slowly. Yeah, and you you have to forgive yourself, man. You just it's okay. You know what? It's nothing's perfect. There is no perfection is not real. And we beat ourselves up over the stupidest shit, and that is one of those things that I you know we beat ourselves up over. And it's completely unnecessary. And it's a to be fair, I realize intellectually that if you know, if I paint my army and it doesn't look particularly good, who the hell is going to care? Exactly. When it's on the battlefield, just having yeah. base coat on it is gonna look just fine. Trust me, I've seen our, I've played with people with armies like that. They looked fine, but it's just that I can, I honestly can't allow myself to. Uh, Put down a model that's not done to the best of my abilities that's why i'm doing it so slowly sure and take your time enjoy it enjoy the process you know and again forgive yourself when you make mistakes but it's important that you learn from those mistakes so that you can improve or whatever you perceive as improving and move forward and be happier and that is really the point of this hobby is to enjoy ourselves take time out of our busy day and you know you don't have to take this shit seriously like ultimately okay in the realm of art none of this matters i'm fine with that that ultimately this has no b weight or bearing on the real world no. It's not it's not like the world is going to be brighter or dimmer if I don't complete this or I don't finish it or I don't do anything with it. It does not matter. Right? So it's okay if I make a mistake. It's okay if I paint it different colors. It's okay if I don't finish it. It's okay. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you're, you're having a big Yoda moment right here. <laughs> you know, we're beating ourselves up all the time over this kind of shit. And, you know, there's, there's more important things in this world than this, you know? The big... Big, one of the big killers is uh, comparing yourself to others. Yes, exactly. It's a big no no. Yeah. So if you compare yourself to yourself yesterday, you'll see improvement, most likely. Yeah, exactly. And that, and that can be a point of strength for you because what you painted like yesterday is not like today. It's not going to be like tomorrow. It's not going to be like a year from now. And you will see improvement if your goal is to improve your goal might not even be to improve you just want to paint sit down slap some paint on your models have some fun with color and just you know just have fun and that's the whole point of this is to have fun this isn't i'm actually serious. having a lot of fun and i mean i am it's just the biggest problem for me is that usually uh, uh i have so little energy that I can't really force myself to paint, but that's then, not... Then don't. Ooh. Don't force yourself. Yeah. I'm very familiar with this. Yeah. That's, uh, it's basically just the thing that uh, I need to spend most of my day in bed nowadays, which is obnoxious. Right. Yeah, no, that is really frustrating. Yeah. Uh, I'm 100% with you on that one. But when I'm painting, I notice that one of the things that helps me paint a lot is precision. Like, just through sheer repetition... I've gotten down my base coat. I've gotten down my painting to be quite precise. So that helps me make a lot of progress relatively fast whenever I do have energy to paint. 
Yep. But don't beat yourself up when you can't fit in painting in a day. You know? Just just take care of yourself. It's just obnoxious because I like I have plans for, you know, spending this much time painting and then I don't do it. That's fine. Again, it's okay. You forgive yourself. It's okay. This will be here when you're ready. Well, to be fair, yes. It's not like this thing will go bad. Right. And for whatever reason, people think, seem to think that this stuff will appreciate, and it doesn't. No. It depreciates. Why would anyone think that? That it appreciates? I don't know. Besides, yeah. appreciation and depreciation in the modern world is powered mostly by hype. Exactly. I have a friend from China, and he says that the Chinese real estate market is nothing but empty hype. People buy flats for literally hundreds of thousands of dollars that aren't even finished, and they're never not going to be finished. Yeah. It's going on here, too. And I don't know. I don't really think it's a healthy way of having your economy work. Well, that's the world, man. The world's not healthy. Nah. God, I just... A YouTube video recommendation popped up, and there is this guy making a Tau Manta out of sprue plastic. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen that dude's videos. Yeah. Um, I Again, I'm a big fan of crazy people. And you know what? All the power to them. Cause to be fair, if it's 100% sprue plastic, that's 100% tournament legal. <laughs> if it was officially GW plastic at one point? Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> That's funny. To be fair, he's actually told me that uh, he's actually taught me that sprue plastic in acetone is a good gap filler, and it really is a good gap filler. Yeah. Oh yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. That, because my Skitari cool. guys, Adeptus Skitaricus guys, come usually with big fat gaps in the middle of their cloaks, where you have to put two pieces of cloak together. This has been invaluable to me. Yeah, I I learned something new today. That was cool. <laughs> Plus, acetone is amazing for getting acrylic paint out of your everything. Uh, and for cleaning your steel. For the, yeah, for the most part, yes. It all depends on what material is underneath that paint, but yeah. Acetone. For cleaning my what? Acetone on these models, you'll just melt your models. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that... I know. I'm not saying that it should be used as a paint stripper unless you're working with pewter. <laughs> pewter? Pewter. <laughs> like the white metal. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, teasing. But I'm teasing a bit, man. I'm teasing. Pewter. I'm not a native speaker, so a lot of this will go over my head, unfortunately. <laughs> it's all right. You're not the only one. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Again, it, yeah, it's just like, it's, it's so okay. Good because you, usually when I'm sp stripping a model, uh, I end up with watches of paint all over my hands and if I have to go and interact with people it always just makes me feel uncomfortable yeah. but acetone fixes that just right up acetone like on the people yeah. no acetone <laughs> <laughs> to be fair acetone's not really toxic you think it would be toxic based on how it smells but it's really not so acetone on like a what is it? Cotton wool disc rubbed all over your hands and just gets the paint off of them. Yeah, doesn't it evaporate off your skin before it actually penetrates? Just use some of this shit right here. Just slap it, slap it right on the model. You want a lack? Lacquer thinner? Yeah. I don't speak French. <laughs> lacquer, lacquer thinner. Why? It, it's it, it's an acetone product. It's for sniffing. Yeah. Oh god! For my whiskeys of choice, it comes in a can, shaped like an acetone. <laughs> it comes in a can. Jeez, Louise! 
Yeah, like an acetone can. Oh my lord. That's that sounds awful. That's that sounds like the kind of shit you go blind drinking. Uh-huh. Oh my god, that don't trip my well, like, have, it, uh, It's whiskey uh, that comes in moonshine flavors. <laughs> oh my god. My uh like where I'm from, Netherlands, we have tequila, but it's like but it's only one brand of tequila. And it comes in this horrible plastic green cactus shaped bottle, and there's no way I'm ever drinking that. <laughs> it's me, Seppi. Art can exist for the sake of art and that alone. Yes, I agree. It can exist. It's just art for art's sake is is always a good thing, but unfortunately in the world we live in, when we start monetizing things that's when we obviously run into all these fraud and, you know, people looking to get paid, as it were. And that's, that's the problem. That's what uh, dirties the whole thing, right? Like miniature painting. Painting miniatures Yeah, one of the things for... I really love about miniature painting is that you can't really monetize it, so there's not a lot of fraud running there. Sure you can. And there is. Because you can go to a commission painting service and be defrauded because it could be just a fly by night kind of thing. Um, you know, people can charge I mean, way more for uh, a paint job that another artist doesn't charge quite enough for or is not competent or <coughs> things like that, right? Jeez Louise. So there, there are ways people get defrauded in this hobby world. Oh, even just like trades. You know, like the the trading of like you know just bits and parts and stuff like that. Yeah, people. There's tons of scammers out there just defrauding people, and of course the biggest uh, fraud is recasting. That's fraud. That's a criminal enterprise, and it runs rampant through this hobby. Right. So, tons of fraud. Tons of crime. Any time that there's money to be made, there are people out there looking to get theirs. So, yeah. Damn people. Damn people, yeah. So the problem with, the, yeah, the problem with Earth is the people. What I'm saying compared to stuff like the actual, like, modern art community, there's not a lot of fraud. Yeah, there is. Because I know for a fact uh, that at least in Russia, a lot of art isn't even displayed. It's just stored in secure locations and used for tax write-offs. Sure. I mean, again, that's criminal if they're using it for tax write-offs. And, you know, I mean, it's not being displayed in a museum. It's not donated. It's not benefiting the art community in any fashion. It's just so that people can hoard it. That's a crime. It's unethical. I mean, it's not really a crime, but it's it's unethical. Hoarding. <clears throat> I mean, you know, these are made up human rules, and you know, we can we can change them. Amazingly enough, I know it's amazing amazing concept. We can change the rules to our own made up game that we call society. Oh my God. This is like a certified Joker moment right there. What? That we can change the rules? We can. We can change these rules. Yeah, I know. But uh, the, like when, I'm when, not saying that... Like, I, I know this is, this is going to probably upset a bunch of people, but there is no such thing as God-given rights or God-given rules. Oh, no. Right? There's no such thing. That's made up. We made it up. And if we can make it up, we can make changes. It's pretty simple. That's commie talk right there, Chris. How is that commie talk? Oh, that's a joke. Oh, but uh, no, but I'm but I'm serious though. Like, but like, even co like communism, right? Capitalism, whatever. We can change the rules. We can have a capitalist society that works. We can have a communist society that works. All we gotta do is change the rules. I really don't think communist society is gonna work. Why? It's just uh, the, econom the economy system is going to be extremely vulnerable to abuse. Well, why, why, why would that be? 
Well, I, mean, but I don't like, really want to argue politics right now. Kidding. Well, it's not politics. It's it's social societal um, guidelines I think, essentially. I, I think technically. I mean, I'm from Russia. Uh, right, but a lot of reasons why socialism and, and attempts to at build communism didn't work. In well, Russia. They uh, haven't worked once anywhere. The USSR tried to make a communist country. And it was it was communism in name only. Well, yes, here's the thing. Uh, that's the main problem with communism. The fact that communism is impossible to actually enforce. Sure, it but capitalism as well. Being, uh, some sort of communism flavored state capitalism. Yeah, you're right. So we've really we, good artists from it. Yeah, like, but I mean, like, commun but communism have, uh, hasn't been communism tried. Hypothetically, but in practical terms, it's impossible. And it's not impossible. It's difficult. Everybody got every well with everything, anything in general. Everybody got to be on the same page. Yeah. Which is impossible. It's not impossible. It's, it's improbable. The odds of it su su succeeding are low. But it's not impossible. Impossible is saying that it can't change. Yeah, it can change. We can make it change. Nothing's written in stone. Oh my god. These aren't, like, society isn't going to break down because of these things. Society will just adapt and change. Pixel Hobo. Odds are zero. <laughs> yeah, but zero decimal zero zero one is not impossible. Just highly improbable. I mean, the odds of your computer being destroyed by space rays is also highly improbable, but how many computers go through that? Destroyed? I don't know, but your computer right now is getting bombarded by radiation and it does flip zeros to ones in your hard drive it occurs naturally which is why memory has ECC error correct it has error correction because those error er errors that occur cosmic rays come through and can flip a zero to a one it happens every once in a while in random computers all over the world one second I'm going to get up the odds of it occurring all the time are very very low but it does occur And there's evidence to support this. Anywho. <laughs> Where are we going with all this? I was trying to get bronze done. <laughs> Holy shit, we're 12 minutes OT. Um, any last words of wisdom? Hale? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just got one of those cramps where like the muscle really contracts and you can see it. All oh, right. Oh, where where, it's, where you can see it pulsing? Oof. Yes. Yeah, that sucks. I get those like in the toe or in the calf. That fucking blows. Yeah, no, I, I went and shifted position and I felt it and I looked down. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, have you ever had it happen in your uh your gluteus? No. What? Your gluteus. Your bum. Your, your ass. Have your ass cramp. Have you ever had an ass cramp? Oh, I get muscle cramps all the time. It's an anxiety thing. But in your ass? Yes. That's a hell of a thing. It only ever it only ever occurs to me whenever I'm getting romantic, so... Oh my god. I'm just saying. That was my case. It's mostly just... It's difficult to walk. Yeah. <laughs> Boop! Fucking mute your mic, man. Jesus. I can't. <laughs> Kim says. Kim says. Remember to shave your nuts. Heretic Scott. Heretic Scott says. Crotch cramp. Yeah, not quite in the crotch. It's on the bum cheek. It's in, it's in the gluteus maximus. And so when that cramps up, that's a hell of a thing because it like you know when a cramp, it, the muscles spasming right. So, yeah, and you get it in the bum cheek. Yeah, it usually only happens to me. You know, um, when when I'm being intimate, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if I haven't lumbered up. 
<laughs> it's just the way you said it, Chris. Like, in the ass, and then immediately it went up intimate. It like... No, I'm not talking like right in the center. I'm talking like the cheeks, man, like the lobes, right? So. <laughs> well, no, I know what you're talking about. It's just the way you said it. <laughs> uh, Killer Whale, any last words of wisdom? All right, good talk. All right. <laughs> I didn't hear that. Any last words of wisdom? We're 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 ending the stream now. So any final? No, I don't have anything. Any final thoughts? No. Just be aware of scams when dealing with NFTs. There we go. Be aware. Words of warning. Barfing. Dildos are fun. <laughs> Dildos are fun. Yep. Except when you have an ass cramp. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, with the dildo, and you cramped up, and you're like, oh, you know, and you're like, oh, you know, no. Uh, and then, and then here people, and then here people are spending money on that machine that, you know, like, that fucks you. And so, yeah, just get a cramp. Just get a cramp. That's all. My point is just, dildos are fun. There we, <laughs> there we go there we are i want to thank you guys for tuning in today i want to thank everybody who's followed and commented and uh subscribed and heretic scott be better every day there i gave an actual word of wisdom there we go heretic scott with the wisdom uh if you are also on the uh the twi uh, twitch side of things uh, heretic scott streams i don't know when was the last time you streamed heretic i don't even know it's been a while it feels like you might have been busy i guess Kim, shit, I'm trying to paint. Yeah, <laughs> he's cramping up. He's cra Kim's cramping up. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, we're ending her there.